morning, welcome back to Everdeen. And today I'm starting this video from the Rococo bedroom on the first floor because the theme of this week, very excitingly, is working on the first floor. I'm so happy we're finally to the point where we can start tackling the first floor because this is the only room that we have finished on the first floor. And there's a fair few of them that are still in the completely original state as they were when I bought the house. Uh, I have done a few other small projects on this floor, for example, the wallpaper in the bathroom, and we've done a few things in the dining room, but really, apart from this room, nothing has been touched. So it's very exciting to start renovating all of the rest of this floor. And today I have a very particular project in mind. I don't have an idea of, of an end point for this project, which may be a bad idea to start a project when I don't know where I'm going with it. But I'm hoping that somewhere along the way, as I start to work on it, that inspiration will strike and I'll kind of get a better idea of what I want to do. Um, and we know what the first few steps are. I'll stop babbling on, I'll just show you guys. So as I step out of the Rococo bedroom, this is it, this is the project. It's the hallway down here on the first floor. And I just don't know what I want to do with it. I definitely want to do some sort of uh, strong and pretty color. I think that this is going to be a paint situation because uh, maybe it's a wallpaper situation, but it just, I, I'm getting the paint vibe. The paint is speaking to me. And the, uh, the wood paneling situation that I originally had in mind is definitely not speaking to me because if you can see down here, like straight wall, straight wall, straight wall, giant curve. Uh, and when I say straight, that's also like definitely not actually straight. So trying to put any kind of trim or faux wainscoting like I'd originally had the idea for would be an absolute effing nightmare in this space. So we're not going to do that. We're going to either paint or wallpaper. I'm thinking paint. I need to maybe look at some paint swatches and think about colors that would go as a good go between between the burnt orange that the dining room on this side is going to be, the pale pink that the Rococo bedroom is. No idea what's happening in here. No idea. This is another project that's just like messing with my brain because I just don't know what I want to do here. And then that's going to have a uh, sort of a pale cream walls with autumn color highlights around the room. So fortunately that's kind of a neutral that will blend into any color. So I'm thinking a strong color, but one that will be kind of a go between, between burnt orange, pale pink, mystery color, and the cream color down here. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is to smooth out the walls. There's some big holes in certain places, so we need to putty. Uh, and then sand, I think I'm going to add wood trim around the edges of all the doorways to give it that little extra uh, architectural feature happening in here because it's a little bit plain. And uh, there's also a few of the old original electrical wires that are, are totally not used from when I bought the house and we redid the, all the electricity that are just still attached to the ceiling. So we need to remove those. Finally, the last part of this project will be to redo the floor but that's not going to happen today or even this week because basically when we've done the majority of the renovation, we're going to have a massive floor renovation week probably, or maybe two weeks or maybe a month where we rent a big floor sander and just redo all of the floors that need it, which is going to be a big chunk of the house, but we're not doing that now. Anyway, uh, I think my first step here is to fill up these holes with putty. While that's drying, I'm going to have a, a think about inspiration and colors that could work well. And uh, then we're going to go to Weldom and buy a sander because we need that for another project that I'm working on. And uh, then we're going to sand and hopefully these will come out kind of flat and nice for painting. Okay, so if you look here, you can see the three main issues with this wall. The first one is the massive curve that happens towards the end of the hallway. The second one is there's a few places where there's a wood beam that's inlaid into the wall. So there's just kind of a hole um, all the way vertically down the wall. And then the biggest problem, because I don't know how to fix it, is the waves. You can see the little kind of 
unevenness of the wall here where the light hits it. So what I'm hoping is that if I choose the right sort of strong, the attractive color, that will kind of hide the waves. And also maybe it can be like, we can, we can sell it as part of the farmhouse charm. wiring that needs to go. It's not attached to anything. All the wires have been cut and there's uh it's definitely dead. There's no uh there's no electricity in this. But it is quite scary because it is uh plastered into this wall. Ah, oh, that's a bad sound. And uh I'm quite worried as I pull on it that a huge chunk of the wall is just gonna like fall out. I do not like this. Um, how am I going to do this? Is there a tool that I need? Maybe if I pull, okay, something's happening. I can kind of unhook it over on this side at least. Oh God. The old electricity in this house was such a mess. Come on, uh-huh. All right, that seems like progress, kind of. <laughs> Okay, I've got the sander out. I've got putty on the reasonably flat wall and I've decided that for the, the super wonky wall, it's better to sand it first and then see if I want to just putty holes or if I just need to dive in and like fully putty the entire wall. So we're gonna, the next step is gonna be sander time. However, there's a big catch. Because to use the sander, I need the shop vac that will suck all the dust away as the sander creates dust. And the shop vac is in the incredibly scary attic because right now it is starting to get a little bit dusk. The attic's going to be real dark. There is no electricity and there are many, many, many spiders. I am not excited. Dun, dun, dun. Actually, it's a lot lighter up here than I thought it would be. This is not so bad. If you guys are new and you haven't seen the attic yet, this is the attic. I do actually really love it up here. I complain a lot at the moment because there's so many spiders. But uh, apart from the spiders, this is actually a really cool space. And it's eventually going to be a dance slash yoga slash aerial yoga studio. And uh, that's going to be very nice when we're able to do it. And actually there's quite good news on that front because to create a studio in here, we need to uh, replace the, well not replace, cover the floor with uh, what's called a Marley floor. It's that special floor that's for dance. Uh, so anytime you see a ballet studio, it's that type of floor. Uh, and I thought that that was going to be incredibly expensive. We were looking online for used ones. We were trying to locate uh, if there was one that we could get uh, secondhand. But actually, we ended up looking at the manufacturer's website and you can get a new one for like 2,000 euros, which is way, that's like a third of what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like six to 8,000 euros. So that's a uh, very exciting. So as soon as we're ready to uh, enclose this insulation that's in the roof up here, all of that that just needs to be uh, 
covered over with some wood and some plaster maybe. Then we'll be ready to really give this a good clean, install the floor, and uh, get this going. There's actually a couple of different abandoned spaces. Like I'm calling this attic abandoned because it's filled with random stuff that was here when I arrived. But uh, there's actually several abandoned spaces in this property. So if you're interested in seeing more of the attic or the barn or the entire other separate abandoned house that uh, I accidentally, that's an interesting story, <laughs> accidentally bought when I bought this house, uh, then have a look through my channel because I have separate videos on all of those things that uh, will show them off and explain how you accidentally buy an abandoned house because it's uh, uh, very surprising. <laughs> last night it got so dusty in this hallway that I just had to give up even with my mask it was like being inside a cloud uh, so I just had to give up and go to bed and so today I am gonna start off by wiping the dust down off of this wall because uh, the putty uh, you have to have a clean surface to put it on so gotta make the surface clean as a kind of a daunting task right now uh, then I have decided that this whole wall is just going to get puttied. Like everything's getting smoothed out, everything's getting roller puttied. Um, by the way, when I say the word putty, I know that that's not like the, the, subs the, the name of the substance that I'm supposed to use for this job. In French, it's entre rouleau. Uh, I don't actually know what it is in English because I've never uh, re renovated a house in English. I've only done it in French here. so. Uh, I'm using entre rouleau uh, and not, you know, if, if putty sounds like the wrong thing to be using to you, it's probably because I'm using the wrong word for it. Just FYI. So anyway, I gotta clean up this wall and then we're gonna apply putty to all of it. That putty has to dry for 12 to 24 hours. So that's all that's gonna happen on this side of the hall for today. And I think I'm also gonna let the other side uh, rest for the rest of the day because the next thing that needs to happen on this side is just I've applied a few little bits of putty to fill in some holes that were here and I just need to sand those off and then that's ready to be primered. But I'm not using the sander today because it is a Sunday and in France there's really a very important cultural uh, rule almost that you don't make noise on a Sunday. So I'm not using the sander today. So. I think today all I'm doing is putting the putty on this wall and then leaving it to dry. day it is actually quite late at night because I've been working in the dining room all day and I'm just now getting to the hallway so I'm not going to do too much in here today but there is one thing that I want to do because this wall the the non-wonky wall this is the wonky wall this is the non-wonky wall this wall is ready for some primer I'm gonna get to paint something which 
if you guys follow this channel, you know that actually normally I really hate painting, but this just feels like a major step forward. I'm really excited. Uh, so I really wanted to get the primer on tonight because I want it to dry so that maybe tomorrow morning I can put some paint samples on it because I have two paint samples that I got at the hardware store and then I have like seven other paint samples from when I had this like massive crisis of confidence in the kitchen and I couldn't decide what color to paint the kitchen. So uh, we're going to recycle those paint samples and just cover a whole wall in different colors and see what catches my eye, see if inspiration strikes. Because I still don't really have an inspiration for what the finished product should be for this project. But the first step is primer, second step is let it dry overnight, and third step is tomorrow, throw some colors up and see what, what sticks. and I've selected all the paint samples that were left over from the kitchen that seem like they might be possible contenders. That one's very light. That one might be empty. I hope it's not empty. Um, this one I have no idea what color it is because it's not really marked on the outside. So uh, we'll see. Surprise paint sample there. And then I also have these two paint samples that are slightly darker, more intense colors. Uh, this one's quite a darkish lavender, and this one is obviously a dark red. Um, just to kind of see how those strike me in this space. Uh, let's let's get them on the wall. Let's see. I'm excited. <laughs> lighter paint color options of the samples we have today. Uh, for some reason, they're not showing up on the camera in exactly the colors they are in real life. In real life, they're like slightly more vibrant. Um, so this is a very pale bluish gray from Little Green. And this was an option that I was thinking about for the kitchen, but then when it arrived, it wasn't as green as I wanted it to be. Um, so... I do quite like this color in here. If you can imagine the walls being that color. I do quite like this one, but I don't know if it's a strong enough color because I don't want this hallway to be too neutral. I do want it to be a little bit of a statement. Um, this one is quite a light, like a really pale lemony yellow. Again, for some reason, it's not really showing up on the camera, but uh, yeah, I would say like a very, very pale version of a lemon yellow. And I like this one, but I don't know. It doesn't grab me. It's not, it's not doing it. Um, this is maybe my favorite of these three colors. This is uh, kind of a dusty rose pink. And again, for some reason, it looks beige. I don't know why, but it is a dusty rose pink. And... Uh, this is my favorite of these three. However, there's a reason I don't want to do pink in the hallway necessarily. And that is because when you open this door and turn on the light, there's the Rococo room that has pink walls. So I feel like pink on pink is going to be a lot. So although I do really like that pink, I'm not sure it's the winner. I, I think maybe this light blue is the leader at the moment. But I want to see what the darker colors look like. So I'm going to put them down here in a separate area so they're a little bit separated. Here are the two darker colors. These are fairly accurate to how they are in real life on the camera. Uh, the red is too much. I think we can all agree the red is too much. I do love that dark shade of red. Maybe I'll find another place to use it in the house, but for this hallway, it's a no. Uh, I do quite like the lavender, but it's too dark. So 
I think what I've gathered from this whole experiment is that my favorites were this lavender and this, ooh, I kicked the ladder, this extremely pale blue. So what I'm thinking now is that maybe what we want to do in this hallway is kind of a very pale blue gray or lavender gray. A gray with blue tinges or a gray with lavender tinges first off would look nice next to the sconces and secondly it would be like a nice semi-neutral uh, to, to blend all of those other colors in. I've got so much paint on my hands. I need to wash this before someone thinks I've done a murder. But for now, I think that that is uh, all for this video because I don't know these, these home renovation channels and DIY channels that do like a full room makeover channel in one video. I don't know how they do it. When I try to do it, the video turns into like a 50 minute long marathon that's taken me three weeks to film. So we're going to break it up a little bit. I'm going to leave this video here and then we're going to pick this back up and do the second half of renovations and show the finished project in the next hallway renovation video. So if you want to see the finished product and, and catch that, then make sure you subscribe because uh, that's the only way to make sure that you won't miss anything on this channel. So um, subscribing also really helps me out quite a bit with the YouTube algorithm. So I really appreciate it. I also appreciate if you guys feel so inclined, if you would please like this video. Uh, and with that, I will see you guys next time 